Good morning. It's the 14th of July and I wanted to say something about one of the people who's commemorated in the Church of England's calendar of saints. Uh, he's a saint particular to the Anglican Communion, the Church of England in particular, uh, not a saint of the whole church, though there's a good case why he should be. Uh, that man is John Keeble. If you look him up in Wikipedia, it says not to be confused with John Keeble, who's the drummer for the band Spandau Ballet. Uh, this is Keeble with only one E uh, as its second letter and then another one at the end, not two E's together. Anyway, that's quite apart from things. 14th of July, the commemoration of John Keeble. And the Anglican lectionary tells you that he's to be commemorated as a priest, a tractarian and a poet. Uh, why Tractarian? Well, because he was a contributor to a series of tracts, as they were called, the tracts for the time. And they began um, as a thread of literature produced after Keeble preached his so-called Assize Sermon on this day in 1833. You might think all of this is a long time ago. Why is it relevant now? Well, Keeble was preaching to judges and other people in the legal profession on that day. And in particular, he was concerned at what he called national apostasy. He was provoked in particular uh, by the proposals in Parliament to reduce the number of Anglican bishoprics in Ireland by 10. Uh, this was a tinkering with the establishment in many ways, but he saw it as uh, symptomatic of something that was deeper as well. And that was he felt that civic duty was coming adrift from the religious profession which all should make. He lamented you know, the place of Christianity in the society of his day. We might now, but there he was back in 1833. What were our leaders doing, he was asking, and what were people in general doing, saying about what they believed? Anyway, as I say, from there there followed the tracts for the time, uh, which were associated with the so-called Oxford movement, um, the deepening of the Catholic tradition within the Church of England. There's much else could be said about Keeble in that particular connection. Some of it would be seen as being politicking within the Church. But there's much more really needs to be said about him as the man that he was, the Christian faith which he professed, and shared with so many other people. He was born in, I think, 1792. He died in 1866. Uh, he was a promising academic at a very young age. He was elected as a tutor in his college, Oreo College, Oxford. Uh, later, he would be nominated as provost of that college, again, at an, earlier, at an early age. But he didn't take up those positions. Instead, he served as a curate, first to his father and then in another parish. He would spend 30 years as the vicar of Hursley near Winchester, dying in post. 30 years, that's longer than I've been in my parish of Benfield side. And that's a long time in itself. There was faithfulness in what he did. But his gifts were shown as well in his poetry. If I asked you, can you name a poet from the 19th century? I suppose, I suppose that many people would go for somebody like Tennyson. But who was the one who actually sold the books? It was actually Keeble in his book, The Christian Year. Uh, by the time the copyright expired in 1873, it had sold 375,000 copies. Uh, it went through multiple editions during his own lifetime. And it's basically a set of poems which were responses to the days of the Christian year and every Sunday of the Christian year. If you sing the hymn, Blessed Are the Pure in Heart, well, that bears Keeble's name, and it comes from a much longer poem, which he wrote to celebrate the feast of the presentation of Christ in the temple, and the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Other hymns that we sing are New Every Morning is the Love, or the generally sung Anglican version of the ancient hymn, Hail Gladdening Light. Keeble saw that there was a beauty in holiness, an attractiveness in God, that we need to incline our affections 
to God to come to him with an open and indeed a pure heart. He was very much associated, as I say, with the Oxford movement, but he wasn't one really for staying you know, at the centre of things. He simply got on with his task of living out his vocation as a parish priest, of calling others to the holiness which should be the Christian's you know, true profession. Well, let me read you know, perhaps the most sung of all of the hymns which Keeble wrote. Uh, it's the hymn, New Every Morning is the Love. New every morning is the love, our wakening and uprising prove, through sleep and darkness safely brought, restored to life and power and thought. New mercies, each returning day, hover around us while we pray. New perils past, new sins forgiven, new thoughts of God, new hopes of heaven. If on our daily course our mind be set to hallow all we find, new treasures still of countless price God will provide for sacrifice. The trivial round, the common task, will furnish all we need to ask. Room to deny ourselves, a road to bring us daily nearer God. Only, O Lord, in thy dear love, fit us for perfect rest above, and help us this and every day to live more nearly as we pray. Well, a hymn is the way we think of it, written as a poem, and then actually set to a tune that already existed before Keeble had written the words. What are the words that we may use in the praise of God that, we're, that may speak of our calling? How may we use the gifts that God has given to us? These are the questions provoked, I think, by John Keeble in his holy living. This is the collect which is used today in this commemoration of John Keeble. Father of the eternal word, in whose encompassing love all things in peace and order move. Grant that, as your servant John Keeble adored you in all creation, so we may have a humble heart of love for the mysteries of your church and know your love to be new every morning. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>